here what we can do is we can create required members over here so you'll see this included users all users excluded user current user what is the application that the user needs to access so all that information is being made available over here So we can go ahead and click on create. So we can choose an option over here. So whether we want to apply it immediately or we want to apply it later. Make sure you don't lock yourself out. So if you want to con uh, configure any kind of name location, con uh, conditional access inside the risk policy, right? I can we can do the required configuration or mapping with these members over here. Second important resource that you'll see from Authentication perspective is the pass through authentication, right? As part of pass through authentication options, as part of the pass through authentication option, here, let's go into details of the diagram. So, this is your on premises environment, guys, where we have Windows Server, where we have Active Directory uh, being mapped, right? So as far as this Active Directory is concerned, this is our on-premises environment, where you have your AD forest. You have primary domain, subdomains, right? Along with this, you also have your connector application. Now this could be on the same machine, or it could be on a machine, another machine on the same network. Not a problem, right? Along with this, we also need to configure the pass-through authentication agent. So as far as this agent is concerned, pass-through authentication agent, this will help us to connect with our uh, uh, Entra ID, right? Entra ID environment on Azure, uh, on uh, Microsoft identity services that we have, correct? Now, once the user is being synchronized, especially once it comes to pass-through authentication, what it will try and do is whenever user does a sign in, the password is not being synchronized over here. Instead, it will connect to your on premises environment, come to the pass through authentication agent, and check the password using that. Please be careful. Your on premises environment cannot be down. It has to be up and running. And using this agent, it will connect to the local environment, fetch information from there, and return back a token saying, yes, I am approving this user. This is a valid user. And uh, keeping that context in mind to be able to access the appropriate services. So the primary entity over here is your pass through authentication agent. Now, once this user is being synchronized, and today if you see, <laughs> there is a lot of uh, misuse of this happening as well. So, since you have this service globally available, people are trying to access their applications from various parts of the globe, right? And when that is being given as a facility, there also is a drawback that we have. And the drawback is, we might be using an unsafe Wi-Fi, right? Open internet connectivity. And in those cases, 
your credentials getting hacked, your information getting leaked, uh, critical information or security information getting leaked out. That's very, very high possibility of that. So how do we protect our authentication? How do we still ensure that it's the same user? So we need to have more than one way of checking if it is the same user, right? And how do we do that? So it could be something that the user knows, which is a password, which is a standard mechanism, something that the user owns, which could be a device, mobile device, or there could be a different kind of uh, um, RFID tokens or other members that we have. Or the third one is biometric. At times we can use combination of all these three. When we say mobile device, it could be an OTP message or it could be an authenticator app, right? So depending upon what we would want to configure. If you look at other options over here, so I already mentioned about authentic authenticator app. There could be pass keys using Fido, right? That could be an option available here, right? If you look at high security options, you have passwordless authentication. Lowest security, you have just passwords over here. So from a con convenience point of view, we can have password plus the second factor authentication, right? So these are set of options which could be utilized, which could be worked. If you're looking at uh, Windows 11, or if you're looking at specific operating system, even these operating systems also provide us mechanisms for multi-factor authentication. So once it comes to your self-service password reset, this is an additional facility that we are providing to our end users, which they don't have to raise a support ticket. Let me go to identity once again. Let me check for password here. Right, so we have password reset. So you want to enable self-service password reset for a specific group, for a specific user, Right, that information can be mentioned over here. Or we want to enable self-service password reset for everybody. We can do that as well. The core purpose of self-service password reset is if the user has forgotten his or her password, how the user can modify or change their password by answering some of the primary questions. So what are the uh, other authentication methods that we have, mobile phone number, office phone number, asking specific security questions. Asking specific security questions over here. So all that information, all those details can be mapped over here. number of methods required to reset. There can be more than one methods as well. So how complex you want to make this process of self-service password reset, we can configure that. We can have options for lockout. So many times you must have realized that if you have tried invalid attempts once or twice, it automatically blocks access saying these were the number of unsuccessful attempts that we had, right? So now your account has been locked. Please connect your administrator to unlock you. Right? So it could be five attempts, 10 attempts, so we can configure these values, configure these parameters.
right? So you'll see there's account lockout and you have block unblock users. Is I don't have permissions. I'm not sure about this because I'm using a Microsoft generated account. Maybe I don't have permissions in that area. And this is a demo environment. If you have your own primary environment, you should be able to perform this action. So once it comes to these changes being done, right? Microsoft is, now one would say, oh, Prakash, should I, uh, do I have to do it every now and then? Isn't Microsoft already performing some of these actions, some of these activities by default? The answer is yes, they do. And that is called as Microsoft default. But at times what might happen is, you're saying, I don't want Microsoft default. Instead, I want to specify my own details. I will define my own mechanism of how I want to manage this environment by using conditional access policy, by configuring set of other parameters, right? So I don't want Microsoft to decide that. I'll decide it myself. Now, when we are doing that, we'll have to disable the Microsoft default configuration options. We have to uh, disable the default configuration and that's when the new things that we have created will get applied. Now, how do I do that? So let's go to, you can go to your domain over here. You can go to specific policies. Can I see that? Your organization is protected by security defaults. Right? So if you if you want to disable it, we can do that. 99.9% .9 of your account compromise can be stopped using multi-factor authentication, which is a feature that security default provides. So what this is talking about is, it says Om Prakash, you don't have to worry. You are already covered. We have already taken care of 99.9% .9 of account compromises. But if, if there is still certain organization policies, if there are certain locations, certain other features that you'd want to implement, you can go ahead and modify that. So you can, you can create your own configuration details, own uh, uh, conditional access details, and we can disable this security default. One caveat over here, I would recommend don't disable it unless you know 100% in terms of what needs to be done, what will be the steps required, communicate, connect with your team members, and that's why it is showing a warning symbol here. I have been uh, logged out myself for around two to three months from my own account. I had to raise a Microsoft ticket and uh, then I was allowed to get back to my existing environment. So please be careful with this. Unless you have studied these things, don't disable the default security settings. Once you have your authentication enabled, we can have access policies over here. We can have your activity logs over here, sign-in logs, audit logs. You can check for what is the pattern for sign-in from people, right? Some of the graphs which I already showed you all earlier. Let's go to lab number two. Check for the pre-existing members over here.
can I see a raise of hands? People who have got the Microsoft 365 account created, the free trial. No one? Let's proceed ahead. Let me show you all the second lab over here. We have two labs for the second in, second module, managing secure user access, managing roles and role groups. Let me go to the second lab. Let me share this link on the chat as well. Let's understand the context here. Organizations must ensure that access to their company data on Microsoft 365 is always secure. Microsoft 365 in turn co-pilot for Microsoft 365 often displays sensitive and confidential data, including emails, documents, customer information, intellectual property, right? Unauthorized access. The Microsoft 365 resources that can lead to data breaches, identity theft, and any other malicious activities. So in our current lab exercise, you'll perform several user management functions for upcoming Microsoft 365 deployment. So if you remember the sequence, data cleansing, security implementations, usage of uh, right group, creation of right groups, policies, even before you go for co-pilot. Let's go ahead, perform relevant steps over here. So let's go to our Office 365 Admin Center. This is my Admin Center, admin.microsoft.com. admin.microsoft.com. This is my admin center. I don't have an MOD administrator account. I have my own account as administrator having administrator privileges. Let me go to the billing section. Within that, let me go to licenses. This is my billing section. Let's go to licenses. If you see the options available, Microsoft Copilot Studio Wild Trial. I have E5 developer without Windows and audio conferencing. What I'm using right now is an E5 license. Subscriptions tab, check for the list of subscriptions. Microsoft 365 So depending upon the environment being mapped, we'll be able to see our 
resource over here. Let's go to our user. I don't have the same name here. As Holly Dixon, so I have to create this member okay let's map the domain over here if you want to map and uh, ask you to change the password, we can do that. So depending upon which licenses you want to assign, I don't have to unassign a license because I already have sufficient amount of licenses available with me in each of these areas. What I don't have is Teams Enterprise right now. I've added a new user. Let me add appropriate permissions as well. Let me go ahead. Make this user as a global administrator. Set the global administrator checkbox. So earlier when we began, began with this, it was a normal user. We have promoted him as a global administrator. We want if we can reset the password. We can capture the information here. What is the current username, current password for it? Let's go to our existing group, Microsoft 365 pilot project.
Let's go to M365 pilot project. Let's go to the membership membership section. Let's add a new member over here. So once you have an existing group, we can add more members within that group. This completes off with task number two. Let's go ahead with task number three, where we can specify conditional access policy to implement multi-fact authentication. Right, so let's go ahead. In Microsoft 365 Admin Center, let's go to Identity. So this will automatically open Enter ID environment. So here we have Holly Dixon as a user. Let's configure conditional access over here. Under protection section, let's go to conditional access. Let's create a new policy over here. <clears throat> new conditional access policy. MFA for all Microsoft 365 users. Let's mention the assignments over here. As far as include, exclude is concerned, which users you want to map this. So I want to do it for all users. I want to exclude certain set of users. I can mention that over here. So depending upon your organizational requirement, we can make these changes. So right now what I'm going to do is just to simplify this process. Let me associate Holly Dixon over here. And I want to enforce conditional access policy for this member. I want to associate conditional access policy for this member. As far as exclusion is concerned, I can see either I can uncheck this because I'm doing it for a specific user or you can go and exclude a specific user. Say Om Prakash, as a user, I want to exclude that user, right? That's one. Second is, what is the target resource that you'd want to verify? What is the target resource or an application when you'd want to 
uh, enforce this condition access policy. Say Microsoft 365 admin portal or Office 365 portal. When politics is trying to access these members, that's when I would that's that's when I want to enforce certain permissions. Let's go to conditions. Right. So you can specify whatever conditions you would want. And here we can enforce require multi-factor authentication. So I'm not mentioning any condition right now. Here I'm saying if this Holly Dixon as a user is trying to access Office, uh, Office 365 admin center, correct? Then I want to enforce multi-factor authentication. So one can either use a template available or we can directly go ahead and map these members over here. Let's verify if this is working correctly or not. Let me specify the correct credentials over here. Now, since I'm logging, logging for the first time, I'll need to go and Configure this member over here. Configure multi-factor authentication. So once we have configured multi-factor authentication for Holly Dixon, we'll be able to see the appropriate details for him. Right now, since we have just configured it, it says till next 14 days, we can skip it. But as we go ahead, it will get enforced. So guys, once you'll have the account being created, you can try out these labs. Let's go for task number five, checking for smart, smart lockout. So what are what number of attempts that you'd want to check for? So those things we can configure within the smart lockout. Since I don't have the permissions there, I'm not able to perform that action. So 
So with this, we complete off with the second uh, second learning path. We'll take a break over here. And once we are back, we'll go to the third module that is managing data compliance for Microsoft 365. Everyone, grab a cup of tea or coffee. Let's connect back in 15 minutes, one five. 